thanks for tuning in to the latest episode of Rise, Grind, Repeat. In today's episode, we talked to Tim from Smart Rap. Uh, it was a great conversation with someone else in the marketing space, just on the more traditional side of things. Uh, we have a great discussion around how car wraps help a business from a branding perspective. Uh, so let's hop right in. But basically, people come to us because they need um, branding on, a, on their fleets. Um, and a lot of times they don't have a logo and uh, they also don't have a sort of a, a very good, very strong brand identity. So then we kind of backtrack a little bit and build that up. And it turns out you can use that sort of stuff for the uh, website and your business mm -hmm. cards and your brochures and everything as well. So love it. Yeah. Cause uh, as I was looking through the website, it's, I mean, obviously car wraps and everything, but as I was looking through the PDFs and, uh, like the one PDF, it, it's awesome. Love what you have, but it looks, it looks a lot like how you help quite a bit is coming to that brand identity. And that's, it's something that, I mean, we talk about quite a bit is the, so many people want to do marketing, talk about themselves, but they don't have an identity on who you are, what you're actually talking about. What made you start identifying that and, and really seeing that there was huge opportunity or people just businesses didn't understand what a brand identity truly was. It just happened because I started to notice that it doesn't matter if you put a crummy logo on a wrap, it's not going to help. It's, you know, all you're doing is getting the wrong impression to more people. Mm -hmm. Right now you're, now you've given a bad impression to like 200,000 people. Whereas if you hadn't done that, there might be a better chance of success. So, then I thought, you know, let's let's try and help people get that sorted out because that that's the center spoke of the sort of like the wagon wheel, as I like to say, is your is your logo and your brand identity, and then from there you can branch out to your website, to your um, printed materials, to your uniform, your vehicle graphics, everything else, your you know Facebook and your mm -hmm. TV or whatever you do. But if you don't have a good center spoke, the whole thing's gonna fall apart. Yeah, was it was it just one client that you had where you just stumbled and like realized the power of what brand identity could do or um it can, it started long 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 time ago like i uh i actually my uh as a teenager my um dad was thinking of keep ways to keep me out of trouble <laughs> and um he he was on an advisory board for mcdonald's where he liaison between the uh franchisees and the uh, agency of record okay and so he thought why don't maybe if you come you should get into advertising because you kind of like okay. are kind of a pitch man and kind of a promoter and you know sit sit in and see how these guys do it and so right then and there i was kind of saw both sides of the equation That's and i cool. said okay i understand the creatives what they're trying to say and i understand the business guys are saying where's the results this looks great. You won an award. Sales are down 10%. You're fired. <laughs> you know, um, it didn't keep me out of trouble <laughs> for very long. And so coming full circle later in life to this, I was like, yeah, now I understand what the agency is saying and why they're doing that is they want more success. So most of the time they want more success so that they can get more work. Mm -hmm. um, not, it's not always aligned that way. Um, success to them might be more billable hours, it might be more awards, it might be very self-serving. Yep. On the other side, the client wants, they want results. So I saw the two coming together and thinking, okay, listen, if this uh, customer has a really killer logo and a killer uh, brand, most likely what's going to happen is they're going to need another couple of vehicles pretty soon. Mm -hmm. It's a win-win. And so I started to notice what happens when people come back in six months and say, can you take this off? It's not working. I didn't get any, I didn't get anything out of it. And what happens when people call back and they're like, yeah, people keep calling me and they keep saying, I see your vans all over town and I only have one van. I look like a national brand, you know, <laughs> That's cool. and I need another van and another one and another, and, you know, and what's the difference? And the difference is comes down to a, a simple design that makes people feel happy about looking at you. How do you, <coughs> excuse me, how do you go about that process? Like what, what are the conversations look like whenever you're helping um, someone figure out that brand identity? And really, because you just hit on something super important is the emotional side of things. And that's where a lot of people or a lot of advertisers kind of 
not so much fail is it's always trying to get the wow effect without figuring out how to make someone feel good, convey the emotion that you want to convey, whether it's good, bad, whatever it is. How do you go about that process and helping someone figure out what that emotion is they need to hit on? Well, you got to ask a lot of questions about what the destin the final destination is, right? And then work your way back. The a lot of times I hear people say, oh, I say, what is the, this is going to sound wacky, but what, why are you getting a rap? Same thing would be, why are you getting a website? Why are you, why are you doing anything that you do? And um, if the answer is for the money or because, uh, you know, we want a super specific thing to happen, then I have to take a, like a much farther back view and say, okay, hold on a sec. Why do you want the money? Why do you want this to, like, what's the end? Is it happiness? Do you like doing what you're doing? You want to keep doing it for the rest of your life? Do you want to just flip this business or what's, you yeah. know? What is because, the ultimate goal? Because, yeah, the ultimate goal then determines the action. Because a lot of times what they say is, I need this, 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 and this, and this. And you're, you're, once you analyze it, you say, well, those aren't the ingredients for the destination you just described. You know? Yeah. You're trying to make... Uh, basically a recipe for that destination and they're giving you like ingredients that have that are not the right ingredients based on hey look other guys have said that they wanted three phone numbers for their three valley locations mm -hmm. and it looks like what do you got uh, 27 digits on the side of a vehicle it looks like <laughs> the matrix right yep and i mean from what your pdf says how much time do you have to actually yeah digest i mean is it what three seconds they're going to be reading inside their mind like the the caveat at the end of those car commercials where they're just like blah, 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 <laughs> at the end right <laughs> nobody's going to read that fast yep. they're just going to be like whatever <laughs> think about my own problems in life and turn up the radio yep yeah. which is the complete opposite effect of what you want advertising to do you want to grab their attention not All have you them block like out. a just a gentle smile in their in their sort of in their brain and heart because eventually, after three years of smiling about that, when it comes time to choose, and they barely remember anything, and they Google, they're, oh, yeah, there's that, there's that company. I forgot mm -hmm. about them. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I love it because, I mean, there, there's a couple things in there. The, the branding side of things, it's, I mean, I, I've worked at agencies, and it's, it's every company, every brand, it seems to be so buy from me focused when sure you're going to get a couple sales, but, but there's so much power in branding yourself, telling your story and who you are and giving all those months or years of that happiness that when you go to make that decision, you're going to be the go-to. And then it costs that much less to get that acquisition because you've done a good job at branding. Um, something that's super interesting that you said at the very beginning was the, it, the, when it comes to McDonald's, the logos or whatever look good, but then how is that actually driving business? And there's usually a disconnect between the two of we did this. Yeah, but right. What's yeah. The, the, again, they're like uh, some, you kind of want to mix up both, right? Mm -hmm. Buy now, buy now, right? There's yeah. that. And then there's, if you drive down the freeway and you see a billboard, it just says Bud Light or Coca-Cola. It doesn't say buy now. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say go to Circle K or it doesn't say order online. It just that's just you know a branding repetition yep. then there's other places that are like hey the uh get a 79 dollar tune-up okay well that's a little bit different right? that you can do that right now yeah so i'm not saying doing one or the other but don't be thinking that i'm doing branding and then have a whole bunch of calls to action yep right yeah or say hey i'm all about brand and then have a bunch of calls to action that yeah. you know <laughs> just be 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 really cognizant of the uh, game that you're playing. Yep, it's, it's super interesting. I mean, it all comes down to just having a conversation. It's 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 identifying when you go in for the ask and when you go like it's it's when you when you're going for the branding and it's a lot of the take the people that are engaging with your branding and once they identify and you can I mean I'm talking on the digital side of things like as they're engaging with that there are things you can do to retarget them and hit them when they are at that bottom of the funnel and looking to make the search are doing a search and looking for your product or service. And that's how you can kind of use the, the branding. And so it is, it is finding that fine balance and really just figuring out who you're talking to, where they're at and how much do they know about you? How close are they to making that buying decision? And so, yeah, I love, I love that balance. Cause I'll, it, it's so skewed on the just buy for me, buy for me, but you've never given a reason 
to buy from you or what value do you bring over your competition or well, I don't even know what it is that you're selling that's the first thing so yeah. buy <laughs> like buy now and you're like that's more that's bigger than the the logo and you know I don't know what it is and I'm not yeah. gonna, I'm not going to research it yep and so on that fact the 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 balance of yeah that looks good but what it, how much what ROI did it drive um how do you go about and I know you mentioned you had a stat on uh bringing sales or um 30 percent of someone's sales account for their vehicle wrap how do you go about identifying or tracking that i just ask them ask them yeah hey how many uh how and what i do is before they leave a lot of times i'll say would you mind if you if you're going to be asking your clients how they heard about you if you would include the vehicle wrap as one of the categories and then they a lot of companies track that because asking that question is super, super important. It changes the direction of the conversation. So if you ask, somebody calls into your agency, right? Mm -hmm. How did you, hey, thanks for calling. How did you hear about us? Um, I Googled you. That's a, I Googled agencies in Tempe, right? Mm -hmm. That's a very different conversation than, um, yeah, Tim from Smart Rap told me all about you, <laughs> you know, or um, I, I saw a, a video that you posted. OK, cool. So now you're you know, you don't have to go back to the very beginning and say, OK, so you're doing your research. Do you know anything about agencies? Oh, OK, you saw that piece of content. What what stuck out? Same thing with with companies. How did you hear about us? Oh, I, uh, I looked you up in the yellow pages or Google. OK, so most likely you're looking for the best price. What's going on? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I saw your vehicle wraps. Oh, okay, cool. What did you think? Oh, I love them. Oh, okay. You know, now yeah. you're talking something else. I was referred by my uh, cousin. I was referred by my mom. Oh, your mom. Okay. That's a pretty strong referral, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Like your mom tells you something that's, for the most part, you're going to be like, oh. It's going to stick. <laughs> yeah. You know. Unless it's something that you like really didn't like as a kid, you're like, hey, I really recommend this castor oil. And you're like, yeah, no, thanks. <laughs> How about this? You know, no. So, but uh, yeah, the referrals are generally stronger and you don't have to go back to basics about who you are, why you're, you know, whatever. Um, you can say, okay, yeah, your friend uh, must have made a good choice. Must, they're pretty mm -hmm. happy. Yeah. So that's what I ask is ask them how to ask their customers, how did they hear about it? And then just the results. Uh, if you're a little pool guy with one vehicle and pe people keep seeing it and more people refer and it just keeps going. Yep. Just, yeah, correlating the their revenue or bottom line to, well, you got to go in here and all of a sudden you saw. So, um, I mean, what what are the, the common questions that people have? And, like, I guess one of mine would be is... Does it matter how good the car looks? Because, I, I mean, I have a 95 Tacoma. It has dents here and there or whatever. But, I mean, would that not be a good candidate for a vehicle wrap? Or I, I don't think so unless you, like, were marketing a, like a smash-up derby or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, if you just think about, hey, this guy's coming in, he's charging the same amount of money as everybody else, and he's driving a totally 25-year-old mm -hmm. messed-up vehicle, aren't you going to be going, why isn't that guy cheaper? I mean, he just, his, it doesn't yep. add up, right? Yep. Now, if you look like better than everybody else and you're only about 5% more, then that makes it look like you're a better value, right? Yep. Like you go in the grocery store, you're buying stuff. One package is bigger than the others and it's not much more. Or one package is better than the others. You're like, why not, right? Or one's the same price and you're like, geez, looks, looks like no name brand. Yeah. What's up with that, you know? <laughs> So definitely a newer model, um, especially if you're in um, anything that needs to show that you know what you're doing, like real estate, right? Yeah. If you're good at real estate, wouldn't you be able to afford a, a relatively new right. car, right? If that's your full-time gig, yep. you know, if you're a, a top quality uh, AC company, but the wheels are falling off your van, <laughs> would you think, hey, maybe they're not quite doing well or not yep. they're not going to do a good job yeah so i would definitely go for new plus you're spending all this money on the wrap like what happens if that engine blows up you just spent two or three yep. grand on a useless vehicle so yep makes sense i mean it really ties into marketing in and of itself like it's it it's funny because it's like you wouldn't be a home or a, a, a mobile car detailer if you come in and you're 
truck is just full yeah, of mud. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, you're a personal trainer and you're not in the best shape. Yep. <laughs> very, very good uh, analogy right there. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it, love everything that, I mean, everything you're talking about, like it's super in line with, uh, how, yeah, just how we think, especially when it comes to just knowing the long-term game. And that's where instead of just selling them the car wrap, it's let's back into the brand identity, figure it out because you know that taking the time it'll, it'll work, which then creates long-term income. Yeah. And um, even just finding out, is it actually this, a lot of times I'm like, you know, your mark, your company is so niche. I don't think spending this money is going to be very beneficial to you. I'll actually say, listen, you're marketing like very specific. I, I had, I think one guy that made machined parts for uh, the aerospace industry oh, wow. and his target was like <laughs> buyers for Boeing. And I'm like, how many of them do you think you're driving down the road? <laughs> right. Now? Yeah. It, yeah. Take that money and target people of a certain income at yeah. Boeing on Facebook and yeah. Uh, maybe LinkedIn or whatever, and, and you yeah. might get a bit farther. But a rap, man, you know, I don't feel good about taking that money. It's not going to work. <laughs> yep. So, what are the types of industries that would be um, very successful and stuff that you have as a business? You're going to be servicing the client at their home. So, pool, landscaping, AC, plumbing, electrical, anything like that. Um, servicing people at their house has a pretty high level of trust a very high yeah. like this barrier like people are inviting a unknown person yeah. into their house where their their personal stuff is where their kids are their dog um it might not always be you might the person might be there by themselves so as soon as they're needing the service this this wall just goes yeah. up like this right this high-tech wall inside of their their emotion and whatnot and they're very defensive so if you can have something that doesn't freak them out right off the bat like a picture of some kind of weird air conditioner like that doesn't look friendly right <laughs> yep or something like that but have a friendly you know character or something like that that makes them smile a little bit and lowers that it lowers that, you know, distrust just a yep. bit. It goes back into uh, just the emotional side of things. Make them make them feel like you're a friend, not a stranger coming in, and that's what that kind of helps do. Uh, the the mascot part, is it rating through that, um, how do you go about coming up with the looks and feel of that? Do you help brands with that? Yeah. That, um, again, it's just uh, take our cues from kind of like the Jetsons. Mm-hmm. You know, those characters or the, uh, even, you know, the that it kind of goes back we want to harken back to a time when we think that people for whatever reason think it was better in the 50s and 60s it may i don't think it actually really was if you take a look at if you wanted to go transport back there and try to try to make a living it doesn't seem like it would be as easy as it is now with all the technology but we we think that it goes back to a more you know a moral time or whatever or honest mm-hmm. time or whatever so <coughs> excuse me if you can tap into that a little bit, make it look like it's been established for a long time, um, give it that sort of nostalgic feel um, with a, maybe a bit of a modern twist on customer service. Good approach. Yeah, you can do you can do quite well. I like it. So, I mean, it, you mentioned when you first came in, it, the last few years have flown by. Typically, it's it's you're growing. You're I mean, you're out there doing stuff, and it seems like I mean your portfolio has been built out. How have you kind of gone about growing your brand and your agency or not agency, but, uh, your company, um, to just getting out there? Um, really it's mostly uh, word of mouth. Um, I'd say, yeah, vast majority is referral. Mm-hmm. Um, a little bit of marketing, um, content production. We do quite a bit of that Tar- yeah. targeted content production. Um, been doing that for uh, really basically since day one. But as what works changes, then we've adjusted. And so the last two years, we've really got more into the um, sort of like the Gary V content mm-hmm. model. Um, and actually, that's where I got that PDF idea for, on the front page of the website that. right now, which is um, produce the, I don't know, the thing that you stand for, the the centerpiece yeah. of everything and just say, hey, if you're going to do this, this is how to do it, whether you do it with me or, or somewhere else. But this is, 
if you want to be effective, this is what you got to do. Yeah, so. no, I love it because that's, I mean, that's, that's the whole reason why we're doing, it's it's a way to give value and it's, it's funny. If you help guide someone to their answer, they have a funny way of making their, their way back to you to make that purchase. And it's like, it's funny how so many people just sit on things and go, I'm not going to give it away for free because they're, they're going to go somewhere else. But it's like, if you, if you help someone out, they're going to come back to you. So I, it, it was great seeing that. I, I mean, you have someone here helping you with video. What do you do with the video? What, it, how, what does your content strategy look like? Just document everything and then uh, go back in and see if there's nuggets that people would find helpful. Nice. Are you guys, um, cause I know you got quite a few blogs going. I, d- I didn't have a ton of time to d- dive into all them. Are you guys using the video to help build that, those blogs or like, I guess where, where are you pushing all the, the videos and all the content? Are you uh, pushing through? Basically, yeah. LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram as well as, um, a little bit on the website. Um, mm-hmm. try and drive some SEO on that, but mo- mostly it's those three. Yeah. Do you do any like how to's? Have you done any like do you get have you done any keyword research around what like questions or anything people are looking for and literally just make one, two, three minute videos on answering those? Not really. I've done stuff that I I'm kind of going about it the other way and saying, if you want to do this, then this. Instead of saying, okay, well, that guy wants to do that, that's not really relevant. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if you want to do the thing that I know how to do, then, the, you know. As in they're asking the wrong question? Yeah. Okay. So, um, I only like I only have one area of expertise. So, I'll just keep putting content out around that rather than saying, okay, this guy said, okay, well, how do you, how do you wrap this thing or how do you wrap that thing? Well, the question is why. Why are you wrapping it, you know? Yeah, because I mean, th- I mean, what you just said, if there's a lot of what's rather than the why's, you can preface with a lot of people ask the what, da, da, and it's, I mean, it goes into the SEO and how you title the videos and all that, but essentially you could pivot it to where you start out, and this is this is a common question that most people have, what, like, what is the process, but I want to get into the, and you can use, yeah, so you can kind of pivot it, you leverage the, the, the volume that people are actually searching for and let them know, hey, maybe this isn't what you're looking for, but this is why you need to think this way, and then that would be a good way to get in front of the audience that might not know, but then it helps bring in some value. So what's the wrap it's like, or something like that? Yeah. It, it's, um, you could do that. Um, most of the time, it's like, what should I put on the wrap? I want a wrap that has X, Y, Z on it, you know, yeah. and so... The process um, is a little bit more self-serving and not as useful, I don't think, because each company is different how they work. And yeah. so explaining my process, that's not really that relevant yeah. until it's like, okay, I really like what you do. What's the next step? Yep. Right? Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Unless there's something super unique, like, um, you know, the process behind, uh, I don't know, anodizing metal or something. You're like, look at this. This is kind of cool. People watch the weirdest stuff on YouTube, right? Oh, it's, it's insane. Like, it's insane. And so you'd want to watch that or something. But um, <clears throat> maybe, may, maybe I shouldn't be the ultimate judge on what people find entertaining. But I have a, a suspicion that hearing some guy talk about how he, the process of his agency works is a little bit less interesting than this is what you should do if you want to achieve this. Mm-hmm. this you know what I mean? More of the actionable help rather than talking about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, yeah, I, I hear you. And that's where, I mean, that's where you can pivot into not talking yeah. about yourself. Unless it's like a po- like, how do you do a podcast? Okay. Well, that's, that's some actionable first get, uh, I recommend these mics. I recommend mm-hmm. you get a studio like this and some lights and have this, that, like all of that sort of stuff. That's helpful. Like, let's say a pool cleaning guy. Uh, this is how you take apart your filter. And you're like, geez, that's good. Uh, I think I'll get you to do that. You know, um, so I, I can see like those kinds of like, what is the correct uh, pH balance for the pool? Well, this yeah. is what it is. Um, those kinds of things. Um, for me, it's more, um, what should you put on the wrap? It's really very, you know, I keep it pretty st- limited to what I actually know. Yeah. Cause I mean, you, yeah, I mean, you could even do video, like if, if the, what is the rap product, if that is a super high volume keyword, you could literally have that be the title and then do dash. This is another way to think about it. And then the whole video is not about the process. It's don't think about the process. You need like, you need to think about why you need to do this or what you need. Like you can, yeah, you can take what people are looking for and not make it self-serving, but just kind of pivot it. It's, it's almost like clickbait type of thing where it's like, Oh yeah, I am looking for what what the process is. You start looking at the video, 
you get in front of them, but it's like the what is not what you should be thinking. It's the why. And then it's, then it's not self-serving. Then you're bringing value. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, wow, I didn't even think about that. And then they forget even what they originally typed in, the what, because then they get into your... To a certain extent, I guess you could do some kind of t- tutorials, like how to lay out your graphics on a, on a wrap template. Yeah. Now you'd be marketing to like other agencies and, and graphic designers that are talking to their clients. Yeah. And you could get some sort of like wholesale type work like that. Um, I haven't done too much of that. I'm speaking right now directly to the small business, medium-sized business guy mm-hmm. or gal that that needs to have something happen. Um, and they don't need to know how to do it. They need to yeah. know that you know how to do it. If they're, if they're wanting to know how to do it, they probably have too much time on their hands and might not be able to afford you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a fair amount of people that, that are trying to get their internal... Um, marketing staff to do it Um, gotcha which is really you know that's fine for getting the basic like concept down if they are have any uh, you know branding type sense but that doesn't mean those are those files are usable and can be printed from Mm -hmm. Um, it's sort of like somebody saying hey I've, I've written a song and you're like well that's not that is a song, <laughs> that te- you know, but it's it's not suitable to, it would be rejected by iTunes for the quality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and also you're missing the chorus. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, it's almost, it almost. And actually, wait a sec, that other part you sampled, you can't sample that. That's copying somebody else, right? <laughs> a lot of times we'll get logos from clients and they're like, uh, like I know where that mascot came from all you did was change a little bit on the logo and now that's but that's somebody else's logo gotcha do you see that happen quite a bit not not that much anymore but yeah there was uh, with the uh, sort of burgeoning popularity of these online sort of sourcing type things you'll get people that just because you paid somebody and they gave you something back doesn't mean that that's that's actually like a legitimate or not copied from somebody else's work. Yeah. And they're not going to tell you. And if you, and even if you ask, they're not going to probably tell you that that's what happened. And I think, I think that's so much more powerful than, uh, this is how the treadmill works. Yeah. These are the calories burned. This is what I do. I think it's way more important to be, this is, this is who I am. Yeah. I think so too, because I mean, when you ask someone, would you rather buy from a stranger or a friend? Most of the time it's going to be a friend. And that's all you're doing is, is creating that friendship, creating that trust, creating that, that relationship with someone by showing them who you are and giving insight. And that, that's literally like the whole premise or part of the premise of why we're doing these podcasts. One is to kind of just hear what others are doing, but then also, I mean, there's already been quite a few good things that have been said in this that can be used for other business to help them grow, but more so anyone that might be a prospect can stumble on and then just get, get a sense of how we think and just who we are. And I think it's so powerful to give people insight into who you are as a brand and the culture that you guys have rather yeah. than what it is that you sell. Exactly. Like you can, the way that companies have worked for a very long time now is that you can pretty much say anything. But it, when it comes down to really the, the actual doing is the part that you can't really fake, right? So uh, I liken it to people call up a company that sells widgets and they say, you know, what's the price? Why are you this? And I'm the best. All right, cool. They call up the next company. I'm the best. They both can't be the best. Yeah. So now what do you do? They, one can say they're the worst and I'm the best. People can say anything. Mm-hmm. The, the, the solution to that is to start getting into what you stand for by showing it rather than saying, I have a, uh, you know, 15 um, points on a thing that we invented. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, yay, uh, whatever. this is what we stand for customer service quality you know it's the same it's the same old same old but i want to see i want to see somebody saying oh man i messed up i'm going to fix that for you or i'm on the roof looking oh look at these shingles they're all messed up you know if you if you'd had a maintenance plan this wouldn't have happened you know mm-hmm. you can't 
you can tell people you're the best, but when you're showing them that, hey, this could have been avoided, that makes them think that, you know, <clears throat> it's not a good idea until somebody else thinks of it themselves. You know what I mean? You just hit the nail on the head. <laughs> like, you got you to gotta give I, someone the aha moment. I love those FedEx commercials from a while back where the guy's like, we need to save money. And the one person's <laughs> like, yeah, we can save 10% by using FedEx. And the boss goes, I've got it. We can save 10% by using FedEx. <laughs> and everybody's like, yeah. And he's like, and they're like, the guy's like, but that's what I said. And he goes, yeah, but I went like this. <laughs> that is hilarious. Do you remember that? Yeah. 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 But like it's everything that you just funny. said, that's, that's like the entire premise of, of marketing. And that's why content marketing works so well. And like giving people insight, it's not like telling someone they need it. Oh, okay. Well, you're just telling me I need it because you're going to make money. You're going to yeah, sell me. But, yeah. but if you can show someone like, oh, hey, it's going to make you feel this way or it's going to give you time back, it, how is that going to actually benefit someone? That's when the aha moment happens and that's where yeah, yeah. that sale comes in or that client comes it, in. Things are pretty jaded out there right now um, and they have been for some time. It's, I mean, there's, there's so much. I mean, if you focus on it, you can find plenty of reasons to be pessimistic. Oh, yeah. Um, and and I noticed that coming in, there's a lot of a lot of distrust. Um, people have been burned. Um, I'd imagine, uh, you know, car industry. How how awesome is that for you know getting what you thought you were getting? Uh, um, I see it with uh, SEO companies. Mm -hmm. They you know, people now are like, man, I don't I, I don't even know if I want SEO because. Every guy comes in and says, oh, we're going to do this, this, and this, and this is going to be the result, and nothing happens. Yep. Right? Yeah. Um, that's that's the big, I mean, that's so coming in, into this. I mean, as a marketing agency, that's what you hear all the time. Oh, I, went, I did this, went with this person, and didn't see any results. And that's, yeah. a, again, another reason why we're doing these podcasts. Because, I mean, we talk about timelines, setting expectations, when to expect results, and just chat through the entire process. And I think that, I mean, just... Most people are in it for the short-term game, so they overpromise and underdeliver. When it's, you'd be amazed that you can. I mean, even if you want to look at it selfishly, make so much more money by not looking at the short term and actually helping people because it's you're going to build that trust. And sure, you might take a little bit longer to make that money, but over the course of five years, it's going to be 10x what you could have made in that month, one year, whatever that relationship was. Yeah, yeah it's 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 quite easy to understand that patience is a is a good <laughs> strategy. It's, it's, it's really not that easy to be patient. Yeah. Um, that's not the way this society works. It's not the way most of us were raised. You know, we want it now. It's mm. Everything is available now. Yeah. Wh why should we wait? Okay, here's my business. Start. Mm -hmm. Why isn't it starting? You know, like, <laughs> I pressed the button. <laughs> you know, isn't it crazy that we've got where's, to? where's the money? <laughs> you know, like I thought it would just be like an avalanche of of uh, cash as soon yeah. as I opened my door. You know, that you know, obviously hyperbole on that, but um, it is it is funny actually when you when you take or and you meet people that are first getting into it. Um, it's it's. You don't want to talk them out of it. Um, just want to make, you know, try to help them not stub their toe really bad. Yeah. Like I have. Yeah. You know, I've done it so many times. Oh, I'm going to do this. Oh, I wish I'd known that. Oh, I'm going to do, you know, I haven't gone through business school. I've mm -hmm. gone through starting what are, and failing. What are some of those things early on? Because, I mean, that's <clears> the, we're less than a year old as a company. And, I mean, full, full time. Like, I left my full time job now. I mean, in July, so it's brand new, and it's some of those things. Like I wish I would have known that. And it's I didn't go, I didn't finish college and go to business school, and it's tough. <laughs> I, I think Learning. you really um, <clears throat> you're in the business of you need two things. You need a, know how to sell, or or have somebody on your team that knows how to sell and know how to market. Because no matter what you are, you're in a, in the business of marketing what you do. Mm -hmm. You're a dentist your marketing your dental services yep. and closing the deals if you're a lawyer if, no matter what you do so i think that's that's something that that uh, i you know i knew in the beginning i just didn't know um how how strong you have to be right off the bat in that like let's say you're um a technician you can you're really good at fixing air conditioning mm -hmm. there's no air conditioner that you've ever not been able to fix 
that is a completely different skill set than um, I have a van and all my equipment and a phone and a website, mm-hmm. and I'm waiting for something to happen. Yep. Just waiting and waiting and waiting. Meanwhile, the mortgage is due, the food needs to be bought, like money's just flying out the window. That pressure now is, you know, maybe your your, yeah. your wife is saying, hey, what's going on? I'm checking the bank account. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, <clears throat> things need to happen. Yep. And so if you're actually good at the, the selling side of things, I think you're going to be have a head start. Now, obviously, you, you still need to know how to fix the air conditioner. You can't be really <laughs> get it, you know, get up there and be like, and not fix it. go up there, hit some pots and pans, all done. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that'll catch up fast. But we're yeah. assuming that you'd actually know how to do the thing that you're being hired to do. You mm-hmm. also know need to know how to sell and market and get out there. Uh, in the past years, that would have been okay. You need to know how to answer the phone. You still need to know how to do that, but now you need to know how to. What do you need to look like on the web? How do you get in front of the right people? Before maybe you had a, a, a yellow pages ad. Now you have, and then it was TV, and then radio. Mm-hmm. You need to know how to do that, or hire somebody that does. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is uh, getting too fancy too fast. Um, you're going to need that those cash reserves. It's going to take longer than you think. Um, getting all of the best stuff. Uh, I mean, it's like having a restaurant, right? Best kitchen, best everything, stainless steel, granite, like best. Mm-hmm. And then your doors open and f- two people walk in. <laughs> You're losing a lot of money right off the bat, right? Mm-hmm. So I think the 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 thing that I <clears throat> would do, not that I would do it any differently over uh, again, um, but just keep a real strong focus on is this absolutely necessary right now instead of like thinking too far ahead oh we're gonna grow into this let's spend fifty thousand dollars so that we're ready in five years you know let's be ready yeah. let's be ready for the next three months to a year and use that money to get ready for the you know but don't go out, build out too far in advance yeah i i love it it's so interesting i mean even outside of just marketing budgets it's it's interesting to see how people just spend their money as a business where it's like i mean i've talked to people where it's oh we don't have money for marketing we don't have sales coming in but they have like a brand new truck and it's like i oh, make yeah, brand new <laughs> yeah and it's like Flowmaster. you have the money you just decided to just, spend it man, and, that's and a lot of bling and there's a boat too <laughs> yep, but no customers coming in, and it, it it is a very interesting thing of of where people spend their money, and it's it's yeah my our my entire thing is what is going to drive the highest ROI like next that way I can fund the other things, and it's yeah it's all about balancing what you're spending on long term versus what you need now, and I come from an accounting background, that's what I went to school for is accounting, so the whole just money thing okay, well, fascinates me. But, um, yeah, so what ha- have you taken any of the content and put dollars behind it, like pushing any money on YouTube, Facebook, uh, any of that, or has it just been pushing it on your social channels and letting other people share it? I have put a little bit behind it just to test what would like does it does it change the reach? Does it change who would go you know who are they gonna send this to? what happens? It's been kind of interesting to see um. Um, you really need to hone down your demographic. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Otherwise, you, you, you're marketing really to the wrong people. And that's, again, uh, one of those things like I was saying, you have a bad logo in front of 200,000 people. Yep. You have a great commercial in front of, like, 14-year-old kids that are not <laughs> going to, you know, not in 10 years going to be owning an AC company, you know? Yep. Um, <clears throat> so... How, I mean, has it, have you seen results from it? Has it driven, drummed up any business? We, uh, just anecdotal stuff where you have people come in, they, they literally walk in and say, hey, I've seen the videos and stuff that you did. I really cool. don't want to do work with you. Um, get some DMs, hey, quote for this, quote for that. Um, I would say probably 90% of the leads come from the social content. and Social? And 10% from... Um, of the online leads come from social. Have you tried search at all, like Google search? 
for the niche that I'm in, yeah, this has been a bit of a waste of money. Um, there's, let's say, <clears throat> again, you're 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 trying to get people before they've already made the mistake of a bad logo and branding decision. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking a Google search, the intent is now, mm -hmm. right? I've already got that. I need it now. And when you start to say, well, that that logo is pretty pretty bad. Yeah. That's not really what they want to hear. You want to get to them uh, ahead of that before they make that that problem. Yep. Um, <clears throat> kind of like a doctor, I guess, right? They're, you want to get to people before they're calling up with a health, um, health emergency. Yeah. Right? And so you can get that content probably not by a Google search, right? I'm looking up my ankle sore. It's a bit late now. But if you had Facebook content on how to avoid sore ankles... Yep. Then, you know, then you're, you'd be on top of it. Yeah. What's super interesting is, uh, did you know that you can, uh, so these videos that you're doing as people are engaging, if you connect AdWords and, and YouTube, you can actually basically target and only show up to those people searching who have watched a video. So essentially it's, it's, I mean, if you were to do a whole campaign around how to come up with a brand and da -da, like all this stuff to qualify them so they know that they have it. And then it's like, all right, if they've watched that video, that video, that video, that video, and when they go to do that search vehicle wraps, then you, that's the only time you show up. And that's, it's funny because that's usually the biggest, uh, opportunity that I see with most, uh, brands is when it comes to that search is they're just showing to anyone, everyone, and to your point, haven't qualified them. And it's amazing what the quality of that lead looks like after they've watched 10, 15 videos. And what, what the main problem with the SEO situation is, is that there's a lot of people looking for vehicle wraps mm -hmm. and very few are actually looking for commercial vehicle wraps. What, what are the other ones? I have a 93 Tacoma. <laughs> I want to change the color. Oh, I just, I saw uh, West Coast Customs. I want to know what it costs. Yeah. No, I, no idea what it costs. It's funny because when yeah. I told uh, Colton that you were coming in, that's what. Yeah, uh, I, I saw a gold Lambo. I'd like to get my Corolla. <laughs> that's exactly. I the, want uh, my Corolla wrap <laughs> like that. Well, did you notice it's a Lambo and not a Corolla? Yeah. That gives you an indication of the price of this, this sort of thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> Has LinkedIn done anything for you? Um, a, a little bit, yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to make a much bigger push on LinkedIn this year. Um, I like the LinkedIn... Like right in in LinkedIn, that's going to be where you give like really super useful, helpful mm -hmm. stuff, right? And the yep. other two are more like catching up with family, and you're not quite in the mindset of hey, here's some here's some knowledge. Yeah. Unless it's more inspiring or something like that, you know, you're not going to watch that as much or be yep. you're not in the right mind frame because you're there for a different purpose. So for Instagram, you might be there to look at nice pictures. So make sure you have nice pictures mm -hmm. with a little bit of with a bit of content. Uh, Facebook, you're there. I don't know. Hopefully not to argue with everybody, <laughs> but <laughs> once you once you've got that out of your system, you can argue with me on my video. <laughs> so nice. Uh, but uh, LinkedIn is much more professional and. Mm -hmm. um, um, it's starting to get more social, but uh, I think it's. I think most people are there to make connections, uh, learn, um, and help. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think it's interesting um, <clears throat> because it's. It has been kind of the the I guess not lone wolf, but it's. You have all the other channels here, and it's just starting to catch up. But I think it's definitely creating buzz. But I think it is because going back to what is the environment that you're in? If you're on Instagram, it's very uh, visual. If you're in LinkedIn, it's very business, but it is kind of like a social platform. And then I think that, that's been the big, like it's finding that balance between you can be social and still talk about business. And I think that's starting to actually pick up is that it, it's not all like I have to wear a suit and tie. And if I'm going to be on LinkedIn, I have to be corporate-y. Um, I think it's becoming more social, but still have on the premise of business. Yeah. And I, I, I'm super excited about just LinkedIn where yeah, we're trying to post on it more and just the overall reach that you have for compared to the other channels is yeah we really got to do a lot more it's just it's stunning how much content you actually have to put out oh, you get you get one full time job <laughs> you get let's say you you know you get one good video in a week that's cool 
Yeah. What, why wouldn't, what, how much more effort does it take to get five? Yeah. Right. You've got to, I know Gabe there had to make seven videos and I picked one. <laughs> right. And the, the one got uh, quite a good feedback. And now, you know, well, I mean, let's go back into those other six and see if, you know, I don't know. Now he's got to do it again and again. So uh, I'd say um, maybe 15% end up being posted and 85% I'm going to think on. Um, that That's a pretty, that's a lot of work. Yeah. What would you say? 